And today I'm going to inform you over Jeffrey Coleman. Ted Bundy, Jack the Ripper. When these names are said in sequence like this, two words come to mind, serial killers. Throughout history, many madmen have been recognized as extreme serial killers. However, there is only one who chillingly takes first place in the minds of many fearful people, Jeffrey Dahmer. I know this topic due to the vast amount of research I have done, not only on this, but in the field of psychology and other serial killers. Jeffrey Dahmer was a known American serial killer and sex offender who murdered 17 men and young boys. According to CrimeMuseum.org, Dahmer seemed to have a relatively normal childhood. It was not until he was older when he experienced changes in his personality. Although he never became involved in any hobbies or normal social in interactions, he did, however, have one bizarre interest, dead animals. During his high school years, he picked up the habit of drinking, which in turn caused him to be dishonestly discharged from the Army. Dahmer then traveled to Florida where he moved in with his grandmother. He was in and out of the hospitals. His behavior grew even more disturbing while living with his grandmother, including being arrested for indecent exposure. Furthermore, his obsession with dead animals became more heinously apparent. Unbeknownst to his grandmother, Many times, Dahmer would keep dead animals in the basement of the house, dissolving them in chemicals. After discovering these strange behaviors, his grandmother was forced to ask him to leave her home and her life. Shortly after being kicked out, Dahmer found a new apartment close to his new work. Only a day after the move, he was arrested for drugging and sexually fondling a young boy. Frightly enough, Dahmer's real fun began in 1978 when he brought home a hitchhiker to his abandoned family house, killed and dismembered. This young man became one of Dom that Dahmer would kill during his daunting journey as a serial killer. Even in his own apartment, he experimented in creating zombie-like sex slaves. He kept other remains in the freezer and retained Polaroid photos of his victims in various post-mortem poses. He used these remains as prizes from his killings. After this, in the summer of 1991, he began to kill one person a week. On the day of his arrest, Dahmer lured Tracy Edwards into his home. While inside the home, Dahmer and Edwards encountered a struggle, but Edwards was able to get free and escape into the streets where he flagged down a police car. When law enforcement entered the home, pictures of dead bodies and dismembered limbs allowed the officers to arrest Dahmer. Upon a further investigation of the house, police discovered a total of four severed heads, a human heart, as well as multiple human remains in the freezer. It was later assumed that he practiced necrophilia and cannibalism. After being indicted on 17 murder charges, the trial began on January 30, 1992. Even though the evidence against Dahmer was overwhelming, he still pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Two weeks later, however, the court declared him sane and guilty on 15 counts of murder. He was then sentenced to 15 month terms. Based on the article, The Infinite Series, Fathers, Cannibals, and Chemists, he served his time at the Columbia Correctional Institution, a maximum security prison in Fort Dish, Wisconsin until November 28, 1994, when he was killed by fellow inmate Christopher J. Scarver. Dahmer's brain, like the prizes he kept from his victims, was preserved in formaldehyde. Was there anything really wrong with Jeffrey Dahmer? Did he suffer from undiagnosed insanity, or did he have another, a number of mental conditions that may have caused his behavior? According to diagnosis, can we really tell whether Dahmer had Asperger's syndrome? Psychiatrist Atoro J. Sylvia and his colleagues decided that through enough investigation, that could conclude that Dahmer had Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autistic disorder. Most of their conclusion came primarily from the book in which Dahmer's father, Lionel, had written. According to the written piece, during his childhood, Jeffrey Dahmer had exhibited behaviors that contributed to this disorder. Nonetheless, his father chose to ignore the fact that anything was wrong with his son. There are many theories surrounding Dahmer's erratic behavior in which people can make their own assumptions. In conclusion, Jeffrey Dahmer was one of the most statistical madmen of all time. His pattern of killing is what sets him aside from everyone else. Although it is evident that Dahmer could have suffered from some kind of mental condition, it does not fully explain in entirety the reason for his erratic behavior.